All right. I think we are. We've given everyone a few minutes to arrive. We are gonna we're gonna get started. Um, okay, to be again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, all right. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're so happy that you're here. Um, if we want to take a moment to stretch and get settled in, um, my name is Una Osato, and I'm a proud member of Jewish Voice for Peace New York City. Um, we're an organization committed to justice and dignity for all people, including Palestinians. And um, we've been holding these weekly conversations with movement elders since April, since the pandemic um, began and people locked down in their houses. Um, um, and today we're so honored to have, be in conversation with the legendary activist, Ms. Major. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're so happy you're here. Um, and we appreciate that all the ways that people are um, showing up and supporting um, uprisings that are defending Black lives and including black trans lives um, and def defunding the police and dismantling white supremacy in all of its forms. Um, and those of you who are black, we want to extend our care and our solidarity and our love to you and our commitment that we are in this joint struggle with you. Um, and um, we want to invite everyone to, to action um, Every week on Thursdays, we phone bank um, from 12 to 1 p.m. to free all prisoners from prison, to free them all for public health and to defund the police. Um, and so we're going to put the link in the chat. Um, it is in the chat. Um, you can click that link um, and join us for our weekly phone banks that we do, because um, we know are all the ways to show up are looking different and we're so happy that this is one of the ways that you are showing up today. We hope you join us tomorrow um, and every Thursday to phone bank to free them all. Um, and we, um, we know that we are in such a historic moment right now. Um, and it's so huge in every direction. Um, and we want to take a moment uh, right now to say the names of the black trans people whose lives have been taken by police, um, by white supremacy, by transphobia and prisons. And today we wanna, um, I wanna call out and honor um, Nina Pop, Tony McDade, Laylene Polanco, uh, who died at Rikers last June. And we, we celebrate their lives we mourn their deaths and we commit ourselves to dismantling every single form of, vi of violence against black trans people in our commitment to defend black lives. And we want to send our love and care to Ayana Dior, a black trans woman who was attacked in Minneapolis just yesterday. Um, I, for those who don't know um, a, about her case yet, um, you can take a moment after this, this call um, and learn more. And those who do, we're going to put the cash, her cash app in the, in the, the app, uh, the chat. Thank you, Morgan. Um, and please, um, send money to her. This is a, um, this call, we're going to be talking, listening, and taking action together. Um, and this is, um, so please send, send money. Um, and, uh, in addition yeah. to showing up to protests and calls um, uh, and, and to defund the police and free all people from prisons um, and cut ties with law enforcement and do jail support, um, we also know how important it is to move money from um, move money to black trans people and organizations. And so today we're going to we're going to do that right now and we're going to be fundraising um for the Trans Justice Funding Project. Um they're an organization that funds trans organizations that need it the most. Um and something that we've done on this call every time um is uh raise money together. Um, we're so grateful that there's 170 people on this call right now. Um, <laughs> I know, Major. <laughs> um, so what we we're gonna we're gonna do some fun. We're gonna move some funds right now. Um, 
Morgan put in the chat uh, where you can donate to the um, uh, trans justice funding project. Um, but we'd love to see in the chat um, how much so we can collectively feel our power of moving money. Um, oh, the cash app isn't working. Okay, we're gonna work on that. Uh, great to have other ways to donate. Um, so uh, if we can, if people want to put in the chat how much they're gonna donate, um, that'd be great. And we're gonna we're gonna move some money right now um, to support um, Black trans people, trans people organizing and fighting. Um, and and then we're gonna get into this conversation with Major. Um, so uh, thank you. Uh, we're gonna see in the chat people who are donating, um, and we're going to ra be raising money together. First for the Trans Justice Funding Project. Amazing. Thank you all. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's so exciting. Thank you. We're showing up in so many different ways and we appreciate all the ways that we're all showing up. Wow. Amazing. Um, we're gonna tally and, and let you all know. Thank you all. Um, so we're gonna get to this interview now. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to do a little introduction. I'm just, I, I feel so, I feel the world as I, I as know that we all do right now, all the time, but especially uh, right now. And the thought of getting to talk with you major today, just like calmed every cell in my body. And I'm so, so grateful. Thank you all for donating. Um, this is incredible. Um, so we're we're so grateful that Miss Major, I'm so grateful. We're so grateful, all of it, um, that uh, you've been such an incredible friend, um, mother, mentor, leader, uh, love coach. <laughs> uh, you've been you've been everything to me, um, and I know I'm just one person in a movement of of millions and billions of people, um, and. Uh, I'm going to just, you are major, you've been the subject of a documentary called Major. <laughs> um, and uh, for those who haven't checked out the film about Major, um, uh, we'll put a link up in the chat. You can, um, it's an incredible film. And, and I, Major, don't worry, we're not going to make you like tell, do the documentary right now for us. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let people go do a little little watching for themselves. Um, thank you, thank you, Morgan. Um, you can go watch the film; it's incredible. Um, and um, you were the ED of TGI JP um, in San Francisco um, for many years, um, and then you had a calling uh, to to pick up and move to Little Rock, um, and that is where you are right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and start the House of Gigi. Um, uh, and some people, when you, you, you were like, and it, you lived, you've lived in Chicago, you spent many years in New York, uh, you, you moved to the Bay, you're like an institution in the Bay, um, and then you deciding to move to Little Rock, like, everyone was like, what, you're moving, why? And, but you had a calling and you had a dream of you were going to start House of Gigi, um, yeah. which some people maybe felt impossible. Um, uh, but that's that's one of the things that blows me away every time I get to experience and talk to you is that which is impossible. You're like, oh, no, that. Yeah, we're doing that. Like you, you not just dream it into reality, speak into reality, create it into reality. Um, like it, it really feels like all you believe in dreams um and uh so um thank you morgan we put house of gigi in the the chat um we love everyone to support house of gigi um this is major's organization um which she's going to talk about uh but um my question my first question to you <laughs> is um how like how do you 
some people don't want to um almost it's like dreaming feels uh impossible but also like some people look down on it how do you constantly dream um and believe in your dreams until they actually you materialize them and create new realities well you know it's not so much that i dream about um, what it's going to be but it's a feeling that i have that it's going to be okay and so when i decided to come here it was a matter of well can i get everything that i own in oakland over <laughs> to uh to, to this spot so um it's just a sense of for you know i believe in holding on to my dreams and so they come uh, to fruition <laughs> I love how like the only thing you're like, it was just logistical. Like you're like, yeah. Can I get that's my stuff so there. That's the only like part of the dream part. That's like, <laughs> figure that out. <laughs> Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about House of Gigi? So people get like, a, a, I mean, I've been so honored. Me and Morgan and sister all went to visit you recently or in yeah. December. Yeah. Um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, House of Gigi and where you are? Well, uh, right now uh, it's raining, but um, I got the grass started out front so that it appetites and we put up to it. And um, it's a comfortable space, you know. It's someplace to where you come to in order to relax and let the things that are troubling you work out at least your point of view you know and so when you come here it's not a training program it's not a oh learn this for five days you know it's just a weekend away so it's um an open space you know i feel that since i've opened up my home to this then it's it's a, it's a work you know It'll be okay. <laughs> and so. so for those who don't know, um, you've created an oasis space in Little Rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you, um, where for transgender people of, of around the country, but mostly focused, you've been focused in organizing in the South um, yeah. as a place for black trans people and trans people of color to come um, and be able to breathe and 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 it is a truly a healing space it's uh yes. mm -hmm. and you and you like just open your home for people to to be there and be in your mm -hmm. presence and heal and 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 have the like and have like nice grass outside and there's a pool it's a, uh definitely <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah good a good swimming pool you know it's not but, like typical ones feet in a row so it's a nice pool um there's a, an acre and a half of land where it um you can see different things i put a swing up there's a, a barbecue pit out there and uh a place where you can sit and learn and relax you know you don't get to do that with all this going on you know so you need some place to go to that's going to be a respite where you can take on the feelings of the house, you know. So when they leave here, they are more relaxed than they were when they came, you know. And that's the important part, you know. You've got to feel good in order to do good. Mm -hmm. so. I, I really feel like that, like, when I, like, when I was talking about you dreaming, you were like, you dream, you were like, I want there to be a pool. I want like the girls to have like place to just like have space and cook and watch TV. Like, you're not like, oh, I just want a crumb. Like, I just want this. You're like, no, we want the whole thing and it's going to feel good. And it's going to, it's going to give people like what you always do, give people the strength to keep on fighting and keep on living. Yeah. And thriving they've got to 
because the only way it's going to change is, is to get the chance. Sorry, can you say that last part again? I lost you for a second. It's when it gets to live that life. Yes. When it gets to live it, yes. Mm -hmm. Totally. I'm, um, uh, I'm going to move to um, our next uh, uh, question of um, Black trans women um, have been resisting police and prisons since the you know beginning of uh, uh, have been have been foundational in queer liberation and often hidden away, um, but that resistance has always been there. And you and other Black trans women have have been doing this work um, that you know a lot of people are waking up to. A lot of people have been doing for a long time. Um, can you speak to? I know you've been doing this work for so many decades, um, but what um, your experience has been um, in in this resistance of um, fighting uh, fighting police and prisons, these things that have caused such violence um, against Black people, against Black trans people, against all people. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been a difficult situation because in a fighting this and put it up a resistance to it, it takes so much out of you, you know, and um, hopefully, you know, things will change, but like this incident now where they killed the guy in Minnesota and the young girl who got attacked up there, you know, when it does settle, hopefully things will change, you know, but I've seen many of, of the situations before, back in the 60s and 70s and 80s, and all the advantages of vaping. And then when it dies down, they don't do anything. So maybe this time they'll do something, you know, to at least make it safe to live in my skin outside the house, you know. So, does it make you feel cynical? Like, because you've seen, and, and all of our elders and everyone who's been in the, the movement and struggle for, you know, like, I'm, like, does it make you feel cynical or like jaded? Or how do you like keeping like, okay, the dust settles, like, are things gonna change or, um, yeah. Well, you know, I can't afford to get cynical over this stuff. I've got to maintain an attitude of maybe it will get better. And when I do that, you know, it makes it easier to get to it, you know, because the thing is that I've got to wake up and be there to fight for the next day. And I can't afford to get cynical or shut myself down or stay in a corner, you know, I've got to get out and be the voice of someone who doesn't have a voice, you know, ears so I can hear for them, you know. So I can't afford that, you know, and neither can we, you know. We've got to stand up and we've got to be seen and we must be noticed. So. Yeah. Thank you. The, um, something that, um, is now becoming more of a, a popular conversation, which is totally incredible, is abolition. Um, abolition of police, abolition of prisons. Um, and the abolition movement is something um, uh, that you've been part of your, your whole, uh, like, uh, for so, so long. Um, and <laughs> um, you, you gave a keynote speech at the Critical Resistance uh, um, tenure. Um, wow, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I remember your hair. I remember your outfit. I remember taking pictures of you by your caddy. Um, for those who don't know, Major has amazing car taste. Um, and uh, anyway, I remember taking pictures of you right before you gave this incredible speech at the Critical Resistance 10 year conference. Um, and I'm going to um, read a quote of yours from an interview you did um, in Captive Genders, the book from 2000. Uh -huh. um, 
so yeah you, you've done the work i just get to remind <laughs> okay you. thank you <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this is gender uh, from uh, Captive Genders, um, and Major said, yes, TGIJP is definitely an abolitionist organization, um, in brackets, that's the organization that she um, was the ED of, and it's an amazing organization that's still going on today. Um, okay, unbracket, back to, yeah. Um, the, the, thing, um, the thing about trying to get rid of the system, um, we can't just stop, we can't just snap our fingers and the bitches are gone. While we tear down the walls and let everybody go, we have to figure out what we can do to make society accept this and figure out a coexistence. One of the questions that usually pops up is the idea that we are some evil, crazy, wild, stupid ass motherfuckers who need to be behind bars. Well, it isn't that they need to be behind bars, it's that they need to be held accountable for what they do, and we need to sort out a way to do that without putting them behind bars. Because when you put them behind bars, technically, you're putting all of us behind bars. It's like telling people they have to get off drugs. You have to give them some alternatives. We have to show society that their, their protection is still insured by other systems. We are working on dismantling this system from the inside out to show it's not, it's not working, to show how it's hurting everybody, and at the same time, building towards something else. My hope is that in the future, there won't be any prisons. Um, uh, I would love to hear what, um, uh, can you talk about what abolition means to you? I know you've been doing this work for so long, um, but what does abolition mean to you right now? And what are your thoughts around it for those maybe, yeah. Well. You know, it um, is something that has to happen. You know, there is no way that this world can continue to accept things as they are. You know, it's not a fair thing the way they're doing it. It's not just the way they're doing it. So I would hope that we get together and form some kind of something that will alleviate this tragedy from happening, you know, because it, it's just wrong, you know. And so if it is wrong and had been wrong since they started this shit, that they do something to correct it, you know, make it palatable, you know, to the people that are being arrested, you know. Uh, take them out and spank them, you know, take them to their mother, you know, do something other than throw the ads behind bars, you know. And I still believe in Applebee's, you know, I still fight for that, believe in that. And hopefully it will come to fruition, you know. Anything you believe and dream in, I believe in. I mean, not not like just. Not, I'm just saying, like what we were talking about <laughs> first. Like you dream it into existence by gathering other people by all the work you do. So I just like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I'm just so grateful for to. Yeah, I think we all are of, of all the work that you've been doing for so long and continue to do like i don't even know how old you are because you don't tell me or anybody but you're some age and you are literally still out here in these streets and like organizing in all the different ways and um as our what's been so incredible about these calls is that getting to, to meet and and hang out with and learn from all the elders who've been doing this for so long um and um yeah uh one thing that um uh i've learned so much from you or like i feel like we like yes i learned from you and i share and i like is um about like pleasure and how important pleasure is um in it's very life. important <laughs> what you say oh god <laughs> Oh yeah, mm, touch it. yeah. Now I can't even, you know. So that's rough. 
baby, poor baby. I um, know. <laughs> so it's, pleasure it's, in lots of senses, not just yeah. um, what you're alluding to. Um, everything, everything. Put everything to pleasure, you know. It can be a sip of cold water, chips, you know, things that you enjoy that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I think you even help, like, you help me expand. When we, like, we, and just so everyone, all our closest friends were on this call, um, me, anyone who knows Major knows you talk about sex a lot and, <laughs> and relationships and all of it. Anyway, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can't not. Oh yes, June is here and she's got the, the squirt squirts to remind us. Um, <laughs> um, and so I just feel like also you 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 help expand for me like what um, intimacy and sexual pleasure can be like, even as you're saying, like it could be a cold glass of water, but you and you like remind me of all the ways that we can be intimate with ourselves, with each other, and um, our senses, and that all of it is like it's both like all sexual at the same time, and like like everything. I feel like you find a way like everything is pleasurable. I don't. It's supposed to be. Why not? Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's. In, I mean, it's a. Yeah, like it's so inspiring to me to okay. it reminds me that you hold pleasure in, in the rage, in the grief, um, and hope, like all of it. Um I feel like like sometimes I'll like call you crying and I'll be like, I'm just the world and like every, all the injustice that's happening, and you'll like bring me down to some of the like smaller like pleasures of like make sure like you check in with me and you like hold me to make sure like I'm doing the, remind me of like the small pleasures to, mm -hmm. um, oh, hey, Beck's hand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all of the chats, I know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're, we're so excited to, we're going to show a video, um, a film by Tourmaline. Um, oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> She's a black trans woman, filmmaker, um, artist and activist, and she made a film, a movie about um, Major, um, and it's called The Pleasurable, no, it's called, oh my gosh, we're gonna watch it and it's gonna have a title thing. Uh, I'm blank, but we're gonna watch it right now. The Personal Things, thank you. <laughs> We are going to wait a second because we can't hear it. So we're going to just try that again. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, is there anything you'd like to like say more about, about pleasure and like. Pleasure. Tom, no. Why, why, why you keep going there? <laughs> I know. I know. I can make you. God. Okay. 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 Yeah. But, you know, okay, let's talk about GGs. <laughs> it, um, it's safer that way. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think we might <laughs> Oh, God. Um, uh, I'm going to see if we, we got, do we have this film we're going to show about Major? We're going to try again before I pull you back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, we are, let's see, sorry, we're having a little tech figuring out, um, so yeah, I, thank you, June, I am tempting her <coughs> about pleasure, <laughs> like, pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it is a real question, like, how are you finding pleasure in these days of, like, where the world is so much we're in a pandemic there are uprisings around the country there's we're just seeing more and more violence and or continued violence um <laughs> keep tempting her they're saying um how how do you find pleasure how do you find pleasure right now well you know it i enjoy the television tv and 
now that they have different types of television, um, you can take the time to select somebody in that and pretend you are them, you know? So you get some visual uh, form of type of pleasure <laughs> out of that, you know? And there can be anything, you know, you can watch murder mysteries and uh, like in them, you could be the murderer, you know? And then when it's over, it's over, it's done, that, that's it, you know, and go on to something else. So it, it's hard right now to um, feel that connection to people, you know, because we can't touch them, you can't talk to them and feel what they're going through, you know. So you have to take advantage of the situations that's there for you to take advantage of, you know. And so that way you still are a part of the whole group, you know. You're in in I guess you're <coughs> in, in it, you know. What was <coughs> that? So, you okay? No, no. <laughs> God bless you, honey. You okay? They're just trying to okay. find some pleasure out there. Yeah, see, okay. <laughs> but that's how you that's how you make it work, you know. And when the pandemic is over, then you run out and meet the people and see the people and take advantage of the situation. Yeah. You know? That's the best way to, you know, to keep in touch. Yeah, you know, I find. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> wow, that was like literally the most PG version of that I've ever heard you say. And now <laughs> I watch um, Corbin, uh, film The Personal Things. things to me is watching a girl go catch the bus in the middle of the day in her shit. You know, like, yes! Because when I was growing up, you know, you been uh, you don't even look at your front door and the sun's out. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, oh, I'm in my stuff. Let me run in the backyard <laughs> and run back in the house. <laughs> if you were out and you were in your stuff, uh, you could get arrested. Yeah. You no, know, they came up with laws like you had to wear three articles of men's clothing if you were a transgender uh, woman uh, to arrest us and put us in jail. You were criminalized for just breathing, you know? What's wound up happening is it's gotten better, but it's not where it should be, you know? We don't get the respect that we deserve for the decisions and stuff that we've made. We are in this every day. Now, whether we display it outside ourselves or not, that doesn't change how you think or feel about yourself. You know, and we need to be given the respect and the understanding to acknowledge that. You don't have to belong to an agency. You don't have to feel that, you know, that you're a part of this and you're in this group. You can be an individual person and do the things that you feel you can do to challenge the status quo, period. You know, uh, for me, not just all the stuff that I do politically, but on a personal level, what I did was change all of my identification back to male. Because it dawned on me, wait a minute, I did this because I didn't want pressure from people. I didn't want to be in the bathroom and they go, we're showing your ID and it says male on it. So I, I did like everybody else did, I had female on everything. And then it dawned on me, wait a minute, I don't even, I don't feel female. I want people to know I'm a transgender person and love me for that. Fuck this other stuff. So I changed everything back to male. So that was my way to strike back. And you have to find your way to strike back. And it's a personal thing. You know, this group stuff is nice, and yeah, we have to get together and work on abolishing what's going on. But the personal stuff is what gives you the strength to go forward.
times and each time I'm just like gosh uh yes you've got you're getting wild applause from so beautiful <laughs> from the chat and we know if everyone's mics were on they'd be like yeah 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. so just that there all of it um and oh my gosh tourmaline who made that film um we love her so much and um and she is an incredible, as I was just describing, an incredible, incredible, incredible filmmaker, activist, uh, all of it, artist. Um, and so, you know, we're about moving funds, we're about supporting Black trans people all day, every day, today. And we're going to do a little fundraising for, to, to show so our appreciation um, to Tourmaline right now. Yes, and shout out to Micah, who is art and is part of JDP also. Um, you saw, um, so gorgeous, yes. Um, we'd love to move some money to Tourmaline right now um, to uh, just to, we wanna honor and pay our artists to who make art that, that honors our elders, our people, our movement. Um, so there are, almost 200 people on this call. This is amazing. Um, I know, I know. Yes, Ms. June. Um, uh, so let's move some money. If you wanna put in the chat, let's, I think we could raise easy $500 right now um, to send, uh, we're gonna, her Venmo is in the chat. It's Tourmaline. Um, if you, thank you, Morgan. Um, uh, you want to put in the chat where there's so much so many of us on this call um and together i believe we can easily raise five hundred dollars to send to her um would people like to put in the chat how much they're going to send and we are going to just we're going to move money today support <laughs> our black trans everybody's um uh yes thank you oh the money is coming in amazing this is wow Yes, yes. Major, this is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> <Definitely> is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, um, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So oh yes, keep putting in the chat. Um, we're gonna support our, our cultural workers, our, our organizers. Um, we're gonna we're moving money today to to trans organizing to trans individuals, um, and we're gonna continue conversing. <laughs> Me and you, Major. Um, <laughs> um, and so, for those who don't know, um, uh, you had a stroke um, in July, mm -hmm. um, July fourth. I feel like yeah. that was the day. That's um, uh, and uh, it's like, I didn't, I put in the notes like, oh, this we'll, we'll talk about next. But as I'm saying it, I'm like, uh, yes, it was last year, July 4th. Um, talking about, it, I like feel very, oh, I'm, I'm feeling very upset. Um, <laughs> but, I, but we're here talking. So like, yeah, it's full of all that. But um, this might be your first interview you've done since you had your stroke yes. or mm -hmm. I don't know. So this is the first time you're speaking Publicly, yeah. I uh, spoke at the, uh, I did a personal thing for online for uh, Bernie Sanders, but um, he ain't the word. <laughs> yeah, so he's well, not we the tried. one. We tried, we organized, we tried. Yeah. Yeah. But this is my first one, uh -huh. so. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm so, it's so incredible to like, just be getting to talk to you, to hear your, like, uh, like for you you couldn't talk for a while um yeah. and like uh i'm just like yeah sorry i just not just not the cry time um and i just <laughs> yeah. um i just uh you've you've been healing and working so hard to to like get better for for all of us um yeah. i feel like um there was like 
praying for you. There was like, you know, like shows, dance parties. There was like all this stuff to people were so, the community just felt like the, the, the shock of like you having a stroke. Um, and um, I just, uh, what has it been like healing from a stroke over this, this past almost year? Well, when I first returned home in uh, November, um, it was kind of rough not being able to do anything before that I could do now. And um, getting back to speaking and moving my right side, uh, it was hard in the beginning, but because of the love I got from people and the, uh, well, great wishes that people bestowed upon me, I felt as if I had to see it through. And so um, I now can talk somewhat. Um, I can- Somewhat. My arms. Hey. <laughs> We don't want to know exactly how well I was born, <laughs> but um, it's good to be able to speak and to get my point across. Um, it helps, um, it changed some of my vernacular to a little slower now, and um, that's okay. I can still cuss and get my point across, that's good. And um, <laughs> it's, hey, it's good. <laughs> yeah, you just do like a slow, fuck you. Yeah, there you go, so nice and slow, <laughs> easy to follow. Just like make right. sure they get it. <laughs> I'll oh, they gotta here. get it, yeah, they must get it, yeah. So it's good, it's good. Yeah. I mean, you've been, yeah, like the, and, for those who don't know, but Beck is there with you, and he's been—he's your life partner, main caregiver, yes. uh, one of our best friends. Uh, we love him, and we love you, Beck. We know you can't—we can't see you, but um, and and Toshio's. Been, the, the, you've had so many community. You've had community come there. Yeah. Love you, Toshio. Um, and and every day that healing from a stroke and healing you've. And the stroke isn't the first time you've been like you've healed from so many things and yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. you said like when I you met you you were on dialysis all the time yeah. and like you've had a yeah. kidney you've you've been through you've yes, healed so many times yeah um but i just i don't you do it every single day um, with such perseverance, even when you're frustrated, that like, you know, when we, we'd first talk when you first got back or when you were still in the hospital, like you could barely mm -hmm. talk, but, and, and Beck would say this, like your spirit was still just like, just as strong. Like you could say one yeah. word maybe, and I'd be like, okay, yep, definitely. Yeah. Like, you'd be like, <laughs> you'd be like just like you wanted me to know, or you wanted us to know, like you were okay. And it was like, yeah. like, I'm okay, let me just heal, or like, yeah, I need yeah. it. You're so incredible at like, uh, telling us what you need, but, and then also you you work so hard to like heal and heal us all. And- Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess the, the next question I have is, or um, is around what you do is, you're, you're organizing, you organize in like this huge way and you've been doing it for decades and decades and you organize in such intimate and personal ways, like like the best organizers around. It's it, Organizing is about relationships and yes. the relationships you hold and the way you care, like, like I'm a daughter to you and there are so many daughters to you on this like call right now and granddaughters yes. and like you have so many children everywhere. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I know. You keep up with and you keep up with everyone like you you and all of this happens like it's not like a post you put on Instagram or something like you no. you these acts of care are happening constantly they've happened before social media and I think like 
social media I have like uh, 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 with relationship to um and you like whenever I talk to you like ground you ground me and I think you do the same to so many people of like um what it, what this work is really about is our care and love for each other um and yeah. I don't know like how can you speak to how, how do you care for so many people and, and um and how, how like how do you do it well if you don't you've got to understand that you care for people who are believing you you know and um wait a minute there okay <laughs> and, but you have to care for an individual you know you can't care for people and then blanket all of them together in one separate group you know and so i try to separate that you know and you realize i realize that each individual has their own needs you know they're not one set of rules that applies straight across the board so i try to fulfill that you know and be understanding and patient with them and in return they love me you know so i thank them for that because they don't have to care about you you know and the fact that they do gives me strength to keep going as i have all these years so yeah you and you do that you do that i just i I guess I just don't understand like how you know to personalize like you you're like your how you can have patience for like everybody's individual like journeys and needs and like like you know that I need reminders to clean up my room and like get <laughs> offline and you know uh <laughs> like uh June needs to call you back or <laughs> Yeah, she, true. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or you know that <laughs> this like, I don't know, like how how is your how do you keep track? How are you tracking so many people's um, needs? So like, um, with your care and um, you have to care about them, and you know when you need it and when you're not, you know, and so if you take someone who can't get to me you know uh they're in california or seattle you know i have to remember that i was in seattle you know uh, i lived in california and use that information that you have to make things better for the person that's there at that point at time and it um it works, you know. I don't, I don't departmentalize it, you know. Um, I use what the talents God gave me, and it works out okay, you know. And I believe in people, and they trust me, so I don't want to betray that trust to them, you know. So that makes it easier to treat them with some respect, um, would give them the honor that who they are, you know. Every girl is not pathal, you know. Every person isn't what is supposed to be, you know. So in that guide, you have to deal with people as they are, who they are, and what they stand for, and then respect them for that. And I do. So yeah um yeah thank you yeah um, something i um i wanted to to ask you about is or talk to you about um we're we're in a time of of mass death and mm -hmm. um you you fought you live you organized and uh fought for people's lives and cared for people um during the in the 80s and 90s around hiv in that pandemic that's still ongoing um 
and you've you've witnessed so much death and grief uh, and experienced grief um, of of people um, in your life. Um, I guess my question is just about like how how do we live in this moment and all the moments where we're just watching everybody die. You know, even with, I know that it's rough and it's hard to get through this, but you've got to remember that life is in, in death, you know, and that these people are going on to someplace better, you know. So that's what I tell myself. Now, maybe there is nowhere to go to, you know. Maybe I wind up going somewhere where I get to be with all the dogs I don't, you know. Moose this side, you know. So, but there's a way to go through this and to handle it and grieve that they aren't here for you personally. But they, our journey is something else, you know. And so that is what keeps you grounded in who you are and remain safe in who you are, you know, because they need you, you know. I have moments where uh, I cry all night long, you know, but I'm up that next day and at it again, you know, ready to take on some more shit, you know, and that's fine. They'll be okay and use it, you know, get together, pull it together and hold yourself. You know, you'll be all right. You got me, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess like, and then maybe this will be my final question before we're gonna open it up. Um, okay. But, um, um, just a question about like, like, yes, holding all the grief and and also the rage and of injustice. Like, how do we how do we continue fighting? Like, like for our whole lives. Like, how um, how do you do this for the long haul? Like, um, any advice to all of us? How did to... I have no idea how you do it as long as I have. I don't know. But you get up <laughs> and you get and you do it. That's all. I don't know. You know, there is no saying that you hold on or a chance you believe in. You know, just that them simple motherfuckers have got to pay and make them pay. Every goddamn day you get up, make them pay. So that's it, you know. Don't be shy about it, you know go out there and make them pay for it. Period. It's <laughs> 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 Um okay, okay, so just make them pay. Make them pay. Yes. Yeah, um, get up yes. the next day. You don't know how, but you just do, you just get up the next day and you yes. just do. Yeah. That's what you do. You get it the next day and make them pay. They get nice outfits, wear it to, you know, so that they have something to look at and then make them pay. Yes, thank you. Um, so we're um, we're gonna open it up for some questions in a second. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna tell us about how our fundraising has been going. Um, so I'm just um, uh, speaking of pay. We are for those who are, anyone who joined us a little late. We have been raising funds um, for um, the Transgender Justice Fund. Um, and, oh. uh, sorry, Transgender Justice Project, um, and, uh, House of Gigi, major, the filmmaker of the film we just saw, um, and I'm going to announce that we have so far raised 
$2,806 for the Transgen Trans Justice Funding Project, which is incredible. Oh, that just right now here on this call. Um, I feel like we could get to 3,000 um, by the end of this call together. Um, so let's see if my feeling can be a real. <laughs> I know, right? I know, that was just us right now. Major talking for an hour. Um, <laughs> it's amazing what we can do together. Um, this is just one of the ways. Um, and, um, and we've been raising money to, uh, yes, can we, yeah, we can totally do that. Uh, Morgan put the link in the, click in the chat. Uh, link in the chat <laughs> um, and um, thank you and we're also raising um, to say to support tourmaline's work um, and we have raised nine hundred and eighty dollars for tourmaline and oh, good. to support work um, this is incredible um, we're um, and we are asking, we are moving funds. We are supporting trans and black trans people today and honoring um, the work with our funds, with our, with our all. Um, and House of Gigi, Major's organization that she's talked about. Um, we're gonna put that in the chat again as uh, also to donate to and support her amazing work and organization. Um, thank you, Morgan, for all the chat support. Um, Ah, great, amazing. Um, we're about to open it up for some questions. Ah, yes, thank you, Morgan. And that is the link for House of Gigi, which is Major's organization that she is in the house of at the moment at the Oasis in Little Rock, mm -hmm. organizing trans people in the South and creating respite for them. Uh, amazing. Um, uh, we're gonna open up for some questions now. Um, are there I have not been following the questions in the chat, but I'm seeing if one of my tech support team <laughs> um, can, can maybe text me a question. Um, uh, let's see, oh yeah, no questions yet. Okay, so maybe that's why there's no, oh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, okay, I, um, we have a question. Um, and it is, um, it feels like, um, uh, sorry, um, it feels like so many movements devolve into internal fighting. How can we combat this and stop people from focusing on little things and remember the bigger picture? Well, you know, you can't control what somebody else is going to do with their body. And if they are going to, it takes two to, to argue. So let them argue with the wall, you know, don't beat it and it shouldn't, it shouldn't explode in front of your face, you know? And the larger picture is hard, you know? Even the people who are in the government, to, uh, go through this change of trying to figure out what to do for the big picture. And they always push the black people aside. So you have to hope and pray that um, they will do something this time, you know. And if they don't, then just keep fighting. That's all you do. <laughs> um. Thank you. Um, okay, we're getting some more questions in. Um, let's see, sorry. <laughs> Reading okay, and then. at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I'm just, uh, oh yeah, okay. I just, I'm just seeing um, a question from Raz. Um, so yesterday was International Sex Workers Day or International Whore Day, sorry. Sex worker, whore, I, I can't, yes, Same whore, different. International yeah. Whore Day. Okay. <laughs> I know what my day is today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so 
<laughs> a question a question here um is um have you been involved with the transgender sex workers movement and what can you tell people about the struggles and importance of that movement well partially i've been involved in the that movement for that sort of activity but um to say what it is that I <laughs> I do for them, <laughs> um, I have to call a couple of red men and find out. <laughs> you support the workers. Yeah, go oh, kind of support them if you need it. They have my time to say, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but you've been a lot, and you've been, you support, you currently support workers. I support and them. You, you, yeah, easy. <laughs> without fail. <laughs> and you've been a long time. Long time. <laughs> cooperative worker. Oh, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, yeah, I mean, I, and I and I think like you, you do like such a like some people try to was it no um try to like uh shame sex workers or like try to be like you know like put you know i've been okay i've been a sex worker so according to the rules uh you're not supposed to have this you know so it uh, goes without saying that fuck you if you don't understand it's that simple. They have to really take the time to understand what they want in a person, whether that male or female, uh, and then get it, you know, and then don't berate the person because they, they do it, you know. So it's um it's a hard road to hard road to grow, you know, but um it can be done. And hookers have been around since the beginning of time. So to get over it, you know, <laughs> shit. That don't mean nothing. That's a beef top, you know. <laughs> so they have to end it. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Um, sorry, okay, I'm I'm just get, pulling more questions. One second. Um uh, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. we got, there's lots of questions, lots, lots of questions. Um, uh, um, I'm going to just, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to just, um, share a bunch of them and then you obviously <laughs> feel free to answer whatever you want to answer. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what do you think about this, um, like, f phenomenon of, um, of cops taking a knee in solidarity with the community? Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just read a few and then you answer whatever you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, what do you feel most proud of? What makes you feel most alive? Um, uh, something, a moment or memory that brings you joy. Um, any of those three? Well, let's say that as far as cops go, they take a knee, they mount they down on the ground flat, and then do the walk on their back. What the fuck they do to take a knee? A knee don't mean a goddamn thing. But I'm concerned about the police, you know. But as far as what brings me joy and pleasure, I get that from people, you know. Um, a well wish, you know, a good, a good night to a me, um, something to give me hope that tomorrow will be better, you know. So anything like that, you know. And what I, I guess my hope is that, um, more people will start to do that, you know, for other people, you know, not just me or one or two other friends that they have. So, yeah, that's what I do. Um, 
Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, some more questions. Um, uh, do you have thoughts on how we can call in other white queers to reform pride? Like no cops at pride, no destructive capitalist corporations at pride. Um, do you support celebrating pride in June? Um, if done in a way that actually honors our trans our ancestors and uplifts trans queer people of color. Oh, okay. Um, oh, wait, sorry. And I have like, do you want me to give you another set of questions? Yeah, please. <laughs> okay. I, know, I know. That's what I, I said I was going to do, and then I did it. So here I'm back to doing it. Um, uh, what difference? What difference are you seeing during this uptick? of non-people of color um, attention um, and past uptick like Stonewall, um, the killing of Rodney King and Ferguson, how do you think COVID is impacting this moment that we're in? Um, well, as far and, as, yeah, come on. Give, no, give. no, okay, 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 you go, you go. <laughs> okay, as far as COVID-19 goes, that shit is really, taking its toll on us as our people goes. Um, I am afraid to go out of my door here to go to a store because I'm at that age where it's really, really for me to go out, you know? So that along with what's going on as far as the, the rights and stuff that's happening behind this boy's death is amazing. You know, that people are taking a chance with this the art out there to organize, to get together in groups. Um, as far as um, that first question, that state, I do appreciate them um, acknowledging the fact that it happened in June uh, and they, they picked the date, which is good, the 26th. But as far as facts go, no. They don't uh, understand a, a thing about it. You know, the reason why it happened, uh, the, what was going on, in that bar that night, you know, they don't understand that it affected the black people and people of color and one or two white people, you know. Um, and it, it's, they continue to use that guide or stuff and they don't know that it's wrong, you know. So I'm for it being in June. Um, I'm sorry that they really don't know the history of it. They don't know why it started in the first place. And um, if they ask me, they're going to get <laughs> a definite no, you know, because those facts haven't got a clue. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I know. I know. It's so. It Oh, like people just want to talk to you about like one, three days in history and you've lived a lifetime. And so I'm so grateful that we didn't just have, we didn't just talk about pride today and the uprising. Oh, which yay. I'm so grateful for, so grateful for. Um, and there, you have a lifetime of experience uh, yes. and organizing and uprising. I'm grateful to. Thank you. Um, uh, quick, I know June wanted to um, uh, shout out, and maybe she'll put it in the chat right now, the um, an or organizing that's happening um, around the lack of care for Black trans women here in New York City during COVID-19. Um, and she's mm -hmm. going to put a cash app um, for that. Um, just what a beautiful community we have of, of ways to support Black trans people, Black trans women, trans people. Um, so June, if you want to put that cash up in the chat, also a place to support specifically Black trans um, people during COVID who've, who've lacked the care that people have need. Thank you, June, for putting that in there. Um, 
Okay, I'm looking to see if we've got more questions. Um, uh, hold on. Um, okay. Uh, is your is your lawn down? No, a bird that so on top, please. Sorry. <laughs> 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 um, okay, a question of um, what um, what makes you what do you feel most proud of? and what makes you feel alive, um, a source of inspiration you've been drawing on, um, and uh, yes, and, and would love to hear more about, um, oh, sorry, yeah, I feel like that those are, those are coupled in a, in a, the, you know, they and feed off each other. I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to read them again, sorry, or you got it? No, please, again. <laughs> One more time, Luna. Here I go. I closed the window so that it wouldn't be noisy from outside, and I'm just like, been sweating. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, um, what, what makes you feel most proud? Um, what makes you feel most alive? And something that you've been drawing on for inspiration lately. Well, first of all, with my car, Cadillac, um, I usually get in my car and just drive. That is the most relaxing time that I can ever think of. And as far as what gives me closer, <laughs> it's a voice, you know. Um, when I can return to them, I shall immediately without fail. But um, that is the most enjoyable form of pleasure that I have. So I am taking advantage of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thinking about some, huh? <laughs> your, your, your pleasure loving is contagious. Yeah. Contagious. Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um we're gonna um yes it always is we're gonna um is there anything you'd like to make sure we go out all the the next things we do that we we're gonna close in a second. So if, in case there's any, you, you want like a closing statement, but I was trying to make it more poetic, but anything you, you want, you wanna make sure I know and that we know and that we, um, when we go out into the streets, and you know, I know in New York, we, we have a curfew, all, all these different places have curfews now, and there've yeah. been all these courageous people that are challenging that. Um, people are like supporting the uprisings all over in all different ways um, and demanding that um, black trans lives continue to be be honored and and fought for as well um, is there anything you want to make sure that we hold in our hearts well the thing is to go out with some semblance of safety and to uh, maintain a sense of self around you when you go out and go out knowing that somebody knows that you're going you know because the police reaction is really un unexpected so if they decide to act up you have somebody who you can call to know that you're out there with that um and for me to all the people that are on this, um, I must say that it is really moving to scan this computer and see all the faces that um, have wanted to learn from this, you know, and um, that will keep my heart full for quite a while. And thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I love you so much, and we are so grateful for all all the ways that you you fight us all um, by by fighting for you, by fighting for all the girls, for all all that you do. 
um, and all the, and how hard you love us. Um, love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> um, and there's so many people in the chat that are echoing this of their love of the treasure that you are for us all and um how grateful thank you miss major and love you and inspired <laughs> it's just coming in it's coming in uh. <laughs> yes okay. you. i love you oh, i wish i was there to hug you um and um we just really want to thank everyone who was on this call today to get to to be with us and learn from major and um who's donated to the transgen trans justice fund um we've raised uh i'm gonna go with it we raised three uh, or I'm going to wait for a text. They're going to let me know how much we've raised. Um, we've raised almost $3,000 for them. We've raised almost $1,000 to send to Tourmaline. We are ra we've raised um, hopefully uh, a lot for of Gigi and hopefully a lot for the Angel Fund. Um, we're so, um, and T, oh yeah. Oh, this is so great. We're seeing love and money coming in in the chat um so those links again um we thank you for pledging to to do this and then um we really uh hope that you will as soon as this call ends um to go and 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 actually donate um and oh wow oh wow we've raised thirty nine hundred dollars so far just on this call um yes. Uh, thank you. Um, and we are here every Thursday um, uh, doing uh, conversations and learning from our, our movement elders. We're so grateful that Ms. Major is here from Little Rock talking to us. I don't know how I like didn't say that in the beginning. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, um, and tomorrow on Thursdays, we do a, a weekly phone bank to free them all um, from, four, uh, from 12 to one every week. It is an incredible call um, where we're in community together, making calls to demand that people be released from, um, that everyone is freed from jail and uh, prison and uh, to defund the police. Um, so we hope that you'll get involved. Um, those links again are in the chat. Um, Wow, we are uh, over four thousand dollars. I've like never been part of something to, like raise this money. Like so, whoa, whoa. Um, <laughs> people are ready for action, and all we are so grateful for all the ways that you're taking action, um, moving funds out in the streets, making calls, emails, um, supporting Black trans organizations and individuals, um, and we're so grateful that you've been here. Um, I think that's we're gonna that's for today. <laughs> um, love you so much. I do Thank too. you all for being here. I love you, Major. Thank you so much. Yes.